Coming up on this episode of Up for Debate, we've got our first ever round of this or that. That's right, we'll take two completely random things, put them head to head, and pick a winner based on arbitrary topics we decide for no reason. It is a nonsensical episode of Up for Debate, and why not start it for you right now? This is Up for Debate, episode number 52, recorded May 26th, 2016. This or that, round one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Up for Debate, uh, the podcast that gives you two hosts to choose from. I'm Sean Jennings, joined as always by the other guy. You're not the other guy. You're really the guy. It's Matt Mariani, as always. <laughs> Sir, what's going on? Thank you. I, I like to be the guy. I mean, I don't mind being the other guy if you're the guy. You're, you know what? I'll be the guy. You be the man. Okay. And I'll, I'll be the dude. The you d- be the boss. And I'll be the... Okay. I'll be the big cheese. You be the head honcho. I mean... I'll be the chief... I'll be the top dog. Sport. And you be kiddo. <laughs> All right. Wow. So so many fun terms. Hey, Matt, I was going to ask you, because many many may not know that you were in Washington, D.C. this past week. Yes, I was. How did that go? You were field Washington tripping D.C. some young youths? That was pretty cool. We saw a lot of awesome stuff and had a lot of fun. It was a great trip, and I highly recommend going. I love Washington, D.C. I've only been once, but I absolutely – what was your favorite thing you saw when you were there? I really, I mean, I've, I've kind of seen and done a lot in D.C., but one thing that I never get tired of seeing is uh, George Washington's house. I recommend it. Now, that's not officially in D.C. That's in a little bit further south in Virginia. That's in Mount Vernon, mm-hmm. but it's still pretty cool. It's a cool place to visit. Um, his grounds are really, really beautiful. Uh, it's right on the Potomac River, very scenic. And uh, you can walk around. Of course, I also recommend going up the top of the Washington Monument. Oh, absolutely! That's pretty cool. Well, they got and did you get to go on the cool new elevator with the glass? This was a oh this, yeah, where where the glass yeah. clears and you can see all the stones as you go down. That's is that new? I wasn't aware that it was, was new. new like ten years ago yeah. when I went. It okay. just opened, so for me. Yeah, and each well, the thing, the cool thing is that each stone is was given by a state, mm-hmm. so you get to see all the states. And of course, I think the top stone is from Hawaii because it's the most recent. Well, what's great is too, didn't they just finish a uh, refurbishment of the monument after that earthquake a few years ago? Yes, they refurbished it. I, I wasn't aware it was because of an earthquake. But... Yeah, you you remember was this five or six years ago? There was that earthquake. Um down in that part of the country we felt it up here you don't remember that yes i, I do recall yeah do that. and that was yeah. one of the concerns about the washington monument they had to do a bunch of construction work to make sure it didn't turn into the leaning tower of washington <laughs> um, which would have not been great well that's good matt sounds like a fun time it was awesome yeah glad to have you back all right. Well, it's good to be back, of course. Now, before we get to this or that, we do have one more thing we've got to get off of our plate, Matt. Do you know what that is? Uh, does it have to do with movies? Boy, does it. Sports? It's our coming attraction. Wow, uh, okay. The Summer Movie League. That is yes. correct. As, as eagle-eyed viewers of this uh, or Don't Panic, uh, no, because uh, we've been mentioning it there every week as well. Uh, our summer movie draft uh, happened on this show a few episodes ago this summer. Uh, myself, Matt, Colby, Dan, and, and uh, Mike all picked a series of movies. We get the box office grosses. Um, and uh, the good news is we get to uh, to reap the benefits and compete head-to-head. Matt, would you like to know where the standings are as of today? I just updated them. Boy, would I. Boy, would you. Okay. Um, let me put them up on screen for the folks at home. Um, in last place, fifth place, uh, with $47 million is Mike. And this was a change today because eking ahead of him by about $1 million, Colby in fourth place, um, picking up some money from neighbors too. Matt, you were in third place with $168.9 million, um, led by your most recent movie, the Angry Birds movie. Um, In second place, myself with $330 million uh, entirely from The Jungle Book. And in first place, um, essentially entirely from Captain America, although Hardcore Henry pitched in a couple million, um, Dan with $364 million. This weekend, we have two big movies coming out, Alice Through Looking Glass and X-Men Apocalypse. So pretty much what what I'm figuring out is the strategy of 
pick as many movies as you can is not a good strategy to follow. The, 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 the quantity over quality method does not apply here. Who are you referencing? I'm definitely referencing, because look, because the first place and second place people both have, like, they've, they've gotten where they are on one movie, essentially. Well. Jungle Book and Captain America. But I'll let you in on a secret. Yeah. We're not even halfway through the summer. We're not, but that's kind of like, it's like a runaway train. Like, you guys have well, got... Well, you know, space. I mean, you look at Colby and Mike, who respectively have 48 and $47 million each, but, you know, uh, Mike has had one movie come out, Huntsman Winter's War. He has one, two, three, four, five, six movies left. Colby's had two movies. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six movies left. So it's a it's a rate. It's a sprint. No, it's a marathon, not a sprint, is what you're saying. I mean, honestly, I came in with the strategy of value for your your bidding dollar. Yeah, that is your. It's not about getting the biggest movie because if you pay fifty bucks for the biggest movie, it doesn't leave you with much money for anything else. You want you want a great movie at a bargain price. I think Jungle Book yeah. is, is what's going to really help me. I only paid nine bucks and got <laughs> one of the highest grossing movies of the summer. That was I think that was a big shock too. I I, I don't think anybody saw Jungle Book. Doing I only that. I only had it at like one fifty two hundred. I three thirty yeah, was that, like that blew the box office open. I was shocked. Um, but you know we've only had two movies top hundred this year, uh, right. so far. Angry Birds opening at forty five. Not not very impressive, Matt. Sorry not to great. say, not great. Hey, I, you know what? I thought. I mean, the, I was optimistic the first too. Night, it looked it looked promising. It had a it had a pretty big return, but I think you're. What's going to help you is the next kids movie to come out, isn't until the middle of June with Finding Dory. Um, all the rest in between is action and horror and and some other stuff. So you could see it slowly picking up money every week. Long tail, you know. Yeah, that's possible. That's true. I just gotta hope all the uh, the neckbeards come out for the World of Warcraft. <laughs> for the World of Warcraft or Secret Life of Pets. <laughs> and Secret Life of Pets, yeah. Yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. I think you know, I was I was looking, I was trying to figure out if this summer was particularly good or bad in terms of grosses so far. Like, are we a down year, up year? And I couldn't find any good numbers. Um, but what I did find is I think. I think we're going to fall short in 100 million plus movies. I, I couldn't, I found over the last four years, we, they average about 14 per summer. Okay. 100 million plus movies. I could come up with, what was it? Six guaranteed 100 million plus, And another maybe five or six maybes. Hmm. That, you know, I don't know. I think it's going to be real questionable. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's really interesting. I will have to see what happens. That is exactly right. We will. You can follow along all summer on our website, upfordebate.tv slash draft. And we'll have updates on the show weekly. Uh, all right, Matt, we, enough of that. We've got to move on to the topic at hand. And this was your big shower idea. Um, this or that. Tell the folks at home how we play this game. Okay. Uh, so base essentially what's going to happen here basically is I'm going to present Sean with uh, an option of one thing or another thing. Uh, he's going to either choose A or B. Uh, based on what he chooses, if he chooses A, we're going to talk about A for a little bit. We're going to we're going to weigh our options uh, between A and B. Uh, if he chooses B, we're going to talk about B for a little bit and weigh our options that way. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the next um, kind of A or B question. Uh, and we're going to just talk about the pros and cons of each option I give him here. Now, he does not know the options beforehand. I have not revealed any of the options. I kind of just made a quick list right here. And there's here. no theme to these options, right? No, there's no theme. Completely they are random. All, they are all just random things. As we, as our usual style is on this program, basically, um, basically, basically. Well, so let's start. Up. I'm ready. Huh? Bring it on. I'm ready to play. You're ready to play. All right. I'm always ready. All right. First up. Now, since I came up with this idea um, during 
a cold shower. I'm going to give you uh, the first one. It has to do with showers. It's going to be cold shower or hot shower. Cold shower or hot shower. Um, that is an interesting question. I'm going to go with hot shower. And here is why. I think there are... Well, first of all, you take way more hot showers than you do cold showers. I think that's just a fact. I, if you find me somebody who takes more cold showers in, aver in an average span of time than, than hot, there's something really wrong with them. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm all for the occasional cold shower, you know, after you're out mowing the lawn or something and you're sweating and you're hot and, you know, you want a little cold water, that's fine. But I think you're always going to revert back to the hot water. Just cold, cold water is an unpleasant experience. Hot water is a pleasant experience. It is absolutely that simple. Period. Okay. End of discussion. Uh, Tell me how wrong I, I counter, am. Counter. I'm going to give you a little counter argument okay. there, and I'm going to rep for cold shower a little bit more. Um. Uh, are you a pansy, Sean? Yes. <laughs> yes. All yeah. right. Well, oh, yeah. Case closed. <laughs> no. Pansies like hot showers. That's my that's my counter argument. Cold showers wake you up. They get you ready for the day. They get you they get you awake and alert. And did you know the ancient Romans, while they didn't have showers, they took cold baths. Yeah, but they also didn't have iPhones. So, you know, I mean their life sucked. You know, you know who you know who takes cold showers, Matt? Homeless people and guys who live in the woods. That's who takes I don't, cold showers. I don't think either of them take showers, period. Who, well, exactly. So nobody takes cold showers. It's ludicrous. We have the technology. Let's use it. You know, okay, right. that, that's like that's like saying you can go buy any car manufactured, but instead you're going to build one yourself out of spare parts you found in your backyard. Why? <laughs> Why? There's no advantage to that. That's that's ludicrous. For the record, I, I do prefer hot showers over cold showers. And I think you have to be insane to prefer the latter. You know, what, and people who do that just are tools you know it's like the same people who are like who always go around bragging because they're vegan or because they're you know whatever and their their clothes are all hand they're knit all by a grandmother in, in sioux fall iowa and it's like come on get out of here you're bragging get out of here yeah cold showers are not fun no i i don't i mean what like you said it's there's a time and place for them but they're just not fun it's Moving the Brussels on. sprouts of bathing now all right Let's not go there because I happen to like Brussels sprouts a lot. I think they get a bad rap, and I think that all it takes is a little TLC, and those Brussels sprouts are delicious. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best and 1 being the worst, rank Brussels sprouts. 6. I would say that's slight. I, in our over, High six. Again, let's just keep Especially mixing scales you use, here. If you use butter. In, in the over, under, or appropriate scale, that's over. That's overrating it, I think, a little bit, but... They're good. Know. They're actually very underrated vegetable, no. I think. I think there's a lot... They're very meaty vegetable, which is good. What I mean by that is that they're, like... There's a lot of sustenance to them. They're not like asparagus, where you it's like... that a, about a lot of vegetables, though. Cauliflower is very yeah, dense. but cauliflower sucks. Cauliflower is the worst. No, it is not! Oh, my God. What? what? You're gonna see. You're gonna seriously I'm gonna rep, rep for cauliflower. cauliflower I'm rep right for cauliflower My above God. Brussels sprouts. Cauliflower doesn't know what it is. It, it, is it broccoli? Is it? No, is it? It's worse than carrot? broccoli. Is it, I will give you that. Like anything. It doesn't have a taste. But you can do so much with it. You like can put cheese it. on it. You could be a vessel to carry cheese. It could be a vessel to carry butter. Have you ever had mashed cauliflower? I have had mashed cauliflower, I mean, and I would rather have mashed. Uh, literally anything any, else. <laughs> literally, literally mashed anything else. Mashed cauliflower is the worst. I don't think that's. Right. I'd have rather have mashed sawdust and glue. Okay, all right. <laughs> that's that's a bit of an exaggeration. No, come on, cauliflower. Cauliflower sucks. It okay. does. It's 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 horrible. As it has it has nothing that's good for you. It's not high that's in any. Not true. It's not. It's probably not true. So your I, source. Uh, Where, I, mean, I didn't. I didn't use any any like informational research to back that up in any way. That's a totally false claim. But you know, it's not a false claim. Is that cauliflower sucks? No, you got to do it. You got to do it the Donald Trump way, which is, you know, people are talking about cauliflower. I don't good, bad. I don't know. There's something going on there. That's for the people to decide. I'm just here That's, to talk yeah. about cauliflower. I'm just bringing it out as an issue. You know? I'm just talking people about talking it. About and, cauliflower. You know, they're talking about how bad it is. I don't know, uh, but that's what you know. If the people say it, 
Yeah, you, you know, I, I don't know. It's just something that's been going around. I mean, I don't people know. are asking questions, and there's people no, there's are no talking shame about it. in that. Um, people fantastic. People are talking about it. Yeah, so that, all right, we got through our first, uh, our first one. Now we're going to move right on down the list. All right. Um, Sunny D or Hawaiian Punch? Okay. Um, a, I did think of one quick thing about our last this or that, which is hot baths are way better than both. Uh, but see, I was actually going to go with baths or shower. Well, that was going to be an option, but I, I, I don't know if I could choose. I, just, I, I preferred the cold versus the hot. Yeah, op- it's a tough it's competition. The bath shower option. Some people like both, but I like my bubble baths. I do. Okay. Um, any, any, and soft jazz. No. So, <laughs> um, what was the, uh, what was this one again? Sunny D, Sunny D, or Hawaiian, Hawaiian punch. punch? Um, neither, because uh, Juicy what, Juice not, is 100 percent juice for 100 percent kids. Uh, I guess. Why I'm, are you not a fan of either Sunny D or Hawaiian punch? No, I think they're both disgusting, frankly. Pre Sun or Juicy Kool-Aid Juice jammers. Um, I'm still giving up for juice. I'm a Juicy Juice guy, 100 percent juice man. Don't I don't fuck around when it comes to my juices. You know what's you know Capri Sun? What's that? Five percent juice? What's the other 95 percent? I mean, you don't know. It's in a pouch. You can't even see it. So, um, I'm I'm a All little right. suspicious. So and I think Sunny that was D is the, gross. That was the right answer. If you're a total nerd, <laughs> is this how the game works? So listen, where you just insult juicy me juice. with regardless of my answer, I could be like, you know, uh, puppies are better than Hitler. You moron! <laughs> Let me tell you why. I like. Listen, it. here's the thing. Juicy <laughs> juice is the obvious choice if you want to be a healthy, a healthy nerd. If you want to be a dweeb and drink juicy juice, like that's fine. Juicy juice is good. It has a whole bunch of nutrients and, and vitamins in it, and it's and it's delicious. I like, don't get me wrong. I would I'd love to have a big glass of juicy juice right now. That would be amazing. But Capri Sun is just cool, man. Like, come on, all the cool kids drink Capri Sun. What like? I would. It's say- awesome. Have you seen the commercials between the two? Oh, they look at the and commercials. They fly around and shit. Yeah. Let's look at the marketing. The marketing for Juicy Juice is all the kids are at a are at a picnic. And, like, the mom walks over with a big thing of Juicy Juice and, and pours each kid a little. And it's like, did you know Juicy Juice has 100% real vitamin C for 100% kids? It's probably the same then, mom who's like, uh, cold showers make you 10% more productive. I take one every day. And we're like, we get it, lady. You're better than the rest of us. Yes. that's what I, that's what It's right up there with cold showers. Now, Capri Sun commercials... There's like a guy air surfing around like the city and then he all of a sudden he's on a beach and he he throws the Capri Sun out there and everybody's like grabbing a Capri Sun and it's like a party. There's like a party on the beach and everybody's having a Capri Sun. Those are the Capri Sun commercials I remember at least. That's why that's the better drink. Well, I think they're both better than the Sunny D commercials where the kids have to dig through soda, purple stuff, and then get to the Sunny purple D in the stuff. back. It's their third choice. Um Really only saying it's better than, A, the thing you really want but can't have, and B, something you can't literally distinguish. Um, and, and your third choice is Sunny D. Um, yeah, no, uh, you know, I will rep for Capri Sun. I like Capri Sun. I like Capri Sun. In a, in a head-to-head Capri Sun Juicy Juice, Juicy Juice narrowly edges it out. Narrowly. The problem is, Juicy Juice, if I need a to-go beverage, you got to go Capri Sun. It's, it's all about the pouch. But if I'm at yeah. home and I reach in my fridge for something I'm going to pour in a glass, you know, can't, you try pouring out of a pouch, it's hard. Um, well, Juicy Juice also has juice boxes. I, I just felt compelled to mention. Oh, okay. They're not That's, as awesome as no, the, the pouches. Capri Sun pouches. Those are badass. Because they're silver, and the juicy juice boxes just make you look like a big dork. Right. Well, but it's kind of like being an extreme person and eating your yo play cup. No, you get gogurt. It's already in a tube. Like it's all about convenience. Um, it's all about you know getting it on the go. Yeah, the windsurfing and the, the whole thing, the beach and um, Capri Sun's great at the beach. Uh, but I will say, you know, the original argument of Sunny D or Hawaiian Punch, that is like choosing between brands of cough syrup. They don't taste good. I'm sorry. <laughs> you could just take a bunch of sugar. You could take an apple, cover it in sugar completely, take a bite, and you've basically gotten the same experience. Now that it's sounds a, really good. Have you ever had a caramel explosion. apple? I have. I have. It tastes like good. a caramel apple. I mean, that oh, sounds like the, you're describing a caramel I mean, apple. It's just, it's just the point that it's just pure sugar with a slight tinge of fruit flavor. 
That's true. I, 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 happen, I, happen to, I happen to admit, I think Sunny D is good. I think it's tasty, but it's not refreshing No. At all. No, it's it's as it's like, refreshing well, as like milk. It's refreshing things you can drink. Oh, it's like oh. yeah, it's up there with milk in terms of how like quenching your thirst. It is. Could you imagine after Probably like a hot workout to grab a sunny D? No. I would rather drink nothing. <laughs> I would rather, rather drink cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> Pureed cauliflower. <laughs> cauliflower mash. Mm. Okay. So here's one that you can totally weigh in on now, being a pro. At one of these, but I wrote both of them down, not realizing you may not have a lot of knowledge about the other, but we'll see. Star Wars or Star Trek? Mm, that is interesting, because I have seen one and not the other. Um, but that, <laughs> that has never stopped me from having an opinion before, and I don't think it will today. Um, Star Wars or Star Trek? You know, I'm going to give it up for um, Star Wars because I've seen it, and I know you can argue Star Trek, so... I think that for the viewer, that would probably be the most fair. Um, and the reason I picked Star Wars is because for a completely weird and arbitrary reason. And that is because I think it, both have established themselves as really credible uh, universes of interesting stories and interesting characters and well-written, well-visualized and thought out universes, right? I give Star Wars more credit because it did it in six movies. Well, really three movies. I guess now four movies. Depends on which ones you count. We'll say up to seven movies. Star Trek did that in like a zillion episodes and 14 movies and a bunch of extra shit. And I think Star Wars did it in less and I think did just as good of a job. That's why I give them credit because I think Star... I put it this way. Star Wars at its worst... I think is better than Star Trek at its worst. And I think that is where I'll give him credit. Okay. That's a fair assessment. Uh, this is hard. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll rep for, for Star Trek here just to be the devil's advocate. I, I would choose either one. And it would really depend on... When people ask me Star Wars or Star Trek, I'm really, I want to turn around and ask them, which like category are you talking about? Are you talking about in terms of in like how interesting the story is? Are you talking about uh, you know like themes? Are you talking about characters? There's a lot. They're like there's a lot of differences between the two. Um, and, and I'll rep for the the longevity of Star Trek because there are so many the the amount of episodes of Star Trek uh, lends itself well to kind of fleshing out the universe more. Like, in Star Wars, you have a whole bunch of books and video games and stuff that explore the expanded universe, but a lot of them seem kind of, like, trite. Like, they're, they're really just there to sell the books. Whereas the Star Trek expanded universe, you could believe it. Like, it's, it's all a lot of, like, believable stuff. It's all a lot of crap, too. But there's, there's a lot of believable stuff there. Like, um... Star Trek, I, I heard one person describe it that um, Star Wars is kind of like um, Star Wars is kind of like a space opera. It's like telling one story, one big story mm -hmm. on a grand scale mm -hmm. it's, and, it, and, it, and with many different acts to it. Um, and somebody else uh, and, 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 uh, somebody described Star Wars as a space opera, and they also described Star Trek as kind of like the Bible, but in space. Especially the original season. If you ever saw the original season, I think that really holds true to it because it's kind of like it's teach. Like each episode has a moral mm -hmm. that it's kind of trying to get across, and then by the end of that episode, you're you fully understand and appreciate that like moral and and. Um, they they deviate a little bit from this with uh, Deep Space Nine and and some of the future seasons, but for the first part, for the most part, the two the original series and uh, Next Generation kind of have that in common, where they're uh, they're each episode has like a like a, a a social paradigm that it's kind of trying to get across. Like there's there's one episode in the original series that deals with racism. Mm -hmm. There's one episode that uh, you know deals with. Um, uh, it deals with gambling. There's an episode in in TNG that deals with addiction. Like, there's a lot of a lot of like little lessons in there. Um, 
and that's that's what's really cool about Star Trek. So, yeah, and you know, two two other things I'll mention. One being that that is kind of what makes me excited about this Star Wars extended universe they're working on. Rogue One being an interesting example. The the sort of the first time we're seeing a, a story that is removed from the same characters we've seen for you know nearly fifty years. So. You know, for me, I'm excited about that to see, you know, I think that's an advantage Star Trek has is telling multiple stories in the same universe um, gives you different perspectives. And Star Wars hasn't really had that. It's been the same story, um, you know, maybe different takes on that story, but really the same story. So I'm excited about that. The other thing, too, is uh, I honestly don't believe there needs to be an aura between these two. They should be on the same team. It should be Star Trek and Star Wars against something else. I don't I, I again, I you know, I realize we have to compare them, but, you know, they, they are different beasts and they're both really good at what they do. Uh, and I don't, you know, it's like when people say Batman versus Superman and it's like, I don't, who cares who wins in a fight? They're both <laughs> awesome. You know, yeah. it's, it's, you know, you want to compare a good thing and a bad thing or two sort of really different things, but these are much more similar than they're different, I think. And, you know, I just think it's a, it's a BS argument that, that there doesn't need to be a winner between these two. They're both winners. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, they they definitely could be lumped into the same one. Just because they have star in the name doesn't mean that they have to compete. Right. Now, speaking of things with star in the name. Is it Star Search? Next, no. Your next uh, choice is not Star Search. It's between Starburst or Skittles. Starburst or Skittles. Um. And again, I think of something funny about our previous topic as we move on to a new one. But um, in in the fight between Star Wars and Star Trek, I choose Galaxy Quest. All right, that's that's going, going with pick. the third option. Um, that movie is friggin' hilarious. I love talk <laughs> about a cult classic. I love that movie. Um, Starburst or Skittles? I mean, honestly, in a candy store, I would pick neither. I don't really like fruity candy. Um, if I have to choose between those two, I'm going to choose Skittles. Um, you know, I like the hard shell. I like the the mix of flavors better. I feel like all Starbursts kind of taste the same. I mean, they're they're slightly different, but not in the way Skittles are. Um, I tend to like small poppable candy rather than long chew candy. Um, you know, I'm a fan of M and M's and Reese's Pieces and similar types of candy. Um, so I think overall, I'm, I w- I would go with Skittles. I don't think Starbursts, even Starbursts against most candy, I probably wouldn't choose Starburst. I don't think it's a quality candy because it's just really <laughs> shitty taffy. <laughs> I mean I... now correct me if if I'm wrong has Starburst changed their like flavors recently um I was actually just googling as far Starburst. as I can tell Starburst has pretty much maintained the same core four or five flavors absolutely not true I have never come across Starbursts that have been different other than the cherry, strawberry, lemon. I kid you not. I have a list here. They're literally like 40 flavors. I know that, yeah, obviously they, they must exist, but I've just never I've never come across anything. Apple, other. banana, blackberry, uh, green apple, honeydew, kiwi, kiwi banana, lemon limeade, mixed berries and cream, watermelon, royal blue raspberry, peaches and cream, passion fruit punch, <laughs> So I need to go out and get myself some some brand new Starburst flavors. I've never yeah. experienced any 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 flavors other than the originals. Um, but that won't stop me, Sean, from pointing out how wrong you are in this choice. You know, once again, I love your arguments, Matt, but there's no way you can defend listen, Starbursts. Go ahead listen. and try. Skittles are very good, but you can't you can't there's something to be said for the individually wrapped starburst okay you want to taste each flavor kind of on its own you don't really want to get uh, their skittles becomes a mess where you just get all these different flavors they're all mixed together jumbled up and then you're just tasting sugar it's just a bunch of sugar starburst you're tasting, every time you have a bite of Starburst, you're tasting the cherry. You're tasting the strawberry. 
you're tasting a lemon. Like, I think there's something to be said for the the individual flavors. And then it, and then you taste the cherry, and then you taste that gross cherry aftertaste. You can't get out of your mouth. <laughs> That's the beauty of a skittle. Is by the time you notice the cherry taste is getting gross, you pop in a lime and you taste lime. That's what's great about skittles is you get the variety. You know, if if I wanted just a piece of cherry taffy, I you know, I guess Starburst is good for that. But you know, I don't. I just I don't. I really struggle to uh, to find the appeal of Starbursts. But I also haven't had Starburst in I can't even tell you how long. Because I generally don't eat taffy style candies. They're not good for your teeth. They're not good for your teeth, but they're awesome because they last a long time. Do you know what the original name of Starbursts were when they were introduced in the UK in 1960? Um, named by a man named Peter Pfeffier in a competition that won him five British pounds. Laffy Taffy. No. Opal Fruits. Opal Fruits. The original four flavors were strawberry, lemon, orange, and lime with the original slogan, Opal Fruits, made to make your mouth water. Oh, they had a jingle. Oh my God, you want to hear the jingle? Yeah, let's hear the jingle. I'm going to sing it. Uh... Oh. So I don't even know if I'm doing it right, but opal fruits made to make your mouth water. Fresh with the tang of citrus, four refreshing fruit flavors. Orange, lemon, strawberry, lime. Opal fruits made to make your mouth water. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm sure that's exactly how it sounded. <laughs> you know, I want to go listen to it. How funny would it be if you're like, wow, that was... And it sounds <laughs> just like that. Turns out there's really only one way to write a decent uh, jingle. Opal um, fruits, buy our candy. <laughs> come and eat our fruit stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. So, all right. I, you know, we we can agree to disagree, but uh, but yeah, I just I don't. Ugh. Not doing it. And and fruit candies. Just why would I want fruit candy? If I wanted fruit, I'd eat fruit. Fruit candy's awesome. No. What, what do you have against fruit candy? It's delicious. No, because it just tastes like awful. fake fruit. I like yeah, the taste of real the fruit point. better. Yeah, I'm no. that guy. Yes. Real f- sucks yeah well real it's okay sometimes but when you're like i don't know when you want candy you want candy you know you don't want fruit sometimes like but sometimes you want when i want candy i don't want fun. things that taste like fruit hence fruit candy i you know i don't know i just don't you know when when, when, I'm, when my sweet buds are going i i don't want like you know cherry it's like no, strawberry come no strawberry is great Cherry's great. Just because you say it doesn't make it true. Yes. Anyway, what's our what's our next uh, this or that? So the next this or that, Sean is shoots or ladders. Ooh, shoots or ladders. Oh man, I forgot that was a thing. Um, shoots or ladders. That is a really interesting thought and. I am going to go with ladders, and here is why. Ladders allow two-way transportation. You can go up a ladder, you can go down a ladder. It's very difficult to go up a chute. A chute is really a one-way transportation. Now, it's faster. If you're going one way, that would probably be its advantage, making your argument for you. But um, I would say ladders, I think, are more are more usable and more universal uh, than, uh, than a chute. I would also say I think a chute traditionally needs more support than a ladder. A ladder is usually very rigid and holds itself up, but a chute requires support beams. You know, you need you can't just put a chute. You have to really assemble a chute. I'm probably overthinking this, but yes, no, come on, no, it's it's ladders. All right, so uh, yeah, a valiant effort, but once again, you are wrong. Uh, <laughs> obviously, that the answer here is chutes because chutes are more fun. You slide down a chute. What's slide not down. fun about a ladder? Ladders work. Chutes represent fun. Ladder represents work. You have so, to work to climb up a ladder. You have to work to climb down a ladder. In a chute, you just kind of go down the chute, and it's it's all fun and games until you hit the rock bottom. But and you know before then, it's fun. You so, have a good time. So if I understand you correctly, to to put this to an analogy, a ladder is like the Soviet Union behind the Iron Curtain, and the chute is like America in the 1980s. I think you're overthinking this. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> The shoot is great because 
not only do you get to go down it, but you can bring stuff down it, like boxes or um, barrels or of live things wombats. that need to be shipped. You can you can carry stuff up and down ladders. Yep. You throw mail down a chute. You throw laundry down a chute. Trash down a chute. Trash goes down a chute. Can't you can't throw anything up a ladder. I mean you can, but it wouldn't really produce much results. No, but you can carry it up a ladder. That's the point. And you can't throw yeah, you if the chute is of any length, you can't work. throw something up a chute. You can if that sh- like all right. Go say you go to a bank. You're going through the drive through teller of a bank. And the thing the, like the Jetsons where you put that thing in and it goes up the chute. Yes. That is not a chute, that That's- is a hydraulic tube. That's the same thing. It's the same principle working no. in reverse. No, it is, that's totally different. Same thing. It's wonderful. Shoots are great. Ladders suck. All right. <laughs> also, on. <laughs> also, yeah, moving on. Anyway, <laughs> one, one quick thing to say about ladders. If you're on the top of the ladder, and I've seen this, you know, I have, I have video evidence of this happening uh, via Looney Tunes. Um, when you're on the top of the ladder and you know you're you're carrying something heavy and all of a sudden one rung of the ladder breaks and then all the rungs of the ladder break and then all of a sudden the ladders become a pair of stilts, it happens to me a lot. That's another reason why ladders suck. So basically, you hate ladders because you've had bad cartoon level uh, experiences <laughs> with ladders. That, yeah, that's, that about sums it up. Nothing bad ever happened on a shoot. Uh, except I'm sure someone has plummeted to their death down a chute. I've seen episodes of CSI where, you know, murdered college students end up at the bottom of a chute. That's a scary show. You shouldn't be watching that yeah. scary, scary. too young for that. Yeah. Um, sunrise or sunset? Um, both suck? Is that an option? That's not an option. That is not an option. You can say they both suck, but you have to choose one. Sunset. I gotta go with at sunset. At the end of the day, or at the beginning of the day. Oh, I see what you did there. You have to choose one. Um, no, I'm gonna go with uh, with sunset, um, because okay. I am never. I was up. I was actually up for a 4 a.m. phone call today. I got to see the sunrise, um, and it was not pleasant. Um, no, I, I like the the sunset because it indicates the the end, the finality, um, and the fact that I don't have to get up early to see it. Okay. Um, I definitely see the merit. Uh, well, I'm going to throw out there a little couple of tidbits that'll prove you wrong. But I definitely see why uh-huh. the sunset appeals. I mean, it, yeah, it's the end of a work day and, and uh, you get home and it's, it, it's accomplishment. But it's also the end, whereas sunrise represents the beginning. The new beginning. It, it's, a, it's a new day. It's, it, you can fill it with anything you want. Uh, you have the whole day ahead of you. I'm, I'm talking, of course, when you're, you're on like a, it's, it's your day off. You could say it's like the weekend or something. Um, but you got so infinite possibilities. You haven't slept away in the morning, but you can still go out and do stuff. Uh, still fairly cool out. It hasn't gotten too hot yet. Sunrises are great, and they're great for what they represent. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to just... I'm going to buck the trend. I'm going to go with the third option. I'm going to pick that one day of the year in the Arctic Circle where the sun n- neither rises nor sets. <laughs> All right. So Sean was reaching for the paradox option here. I am. Okay. I am. I'm, I'm going to pick the, the one day in the far future where the sun does not rise. Where we uh, don't all have... all of mankind perishes. We have a, we have a, a, a man-made light that we just created that's just sitting out there in space because the sun exploded. Yep. I think that was the plot of a James Bond villain. I'm anyway. sure it was. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Moving on. Uh, how many do we have time for? Just curious. Uh, we can max out for another 20 minutes, so we can do what? as many more as you'd like or as few as you'd okay. like. How many more on I, your I list? Plenty more. I was just, I just right. wanted to... I'll uh, stop you when we're running long. All right. All right, Mr. Sean, your next option here, gold or glory? 
And what I mean also, it can also be phrased as fame, fame or fortune. Or fortune. Yeah. Um, that is a, actually, this may be my favorite one so far because okay. a lot of these are, are low stakes, you know, sunrise or sunset, <laughs> you know, like hot shower, cold shower, you know, it's like interesting, but you know, but this is now we're getting deep. It real is, this is the, the cut of your jib right here. Um, in terms of your fame or fortune, you know, uh, that is a tough one. You know, I would probably go with fortune. I have said before, I assuming you would have one without having the other. So you would be rich but unknown and you would be famous but not particularly wealthy, right? I'm assuming that's the argument. Yeah, okay. it's you got to have one or if you if you right. if you could obtain one or the other. Right. And, and and I like the idea of of fortune strictly because it's not fame. I think fame probably sucks. Um, that's I've said before, I have no interest in playing the lottery because I don't want to win the lottery. And it's not because I don't want to be rich. It's because I don't want people hounding me because I'm rich. If you can be rich and completely anonymous, that's, are you kidding me? That's the dream. That's great. <laughs> it's like, leave me alone to spend my money and let me be awesome. Because, you know, you read these stories of these lottery winners who just go through a hell of scams and people knocking at their doors and trying to, money managers trying to rob them and it's a total nightmare. Um, even people who aren't rich but are famous, I mean, you know, these viral stars or, you know, whatever flavor of the month who don't become particularly wealthy, um, it's just not a pleasant experience. And most of those people tend to, to regret doing it afterwards. So I, I don't see any value in, in, in being famous. I, I, would, I would rather be uh, have fortune in this case. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick fame on this one. Because I know that's why you do this show. Of course, because it's not for the fortune. Things. It's definitely not for the fortune, <laughs> unless there's something you know that I don't know. I don't know. I'm um, anonymous, so you don't. You know. <laughs> uh, the fame is cool because, like, say you're a pro athlete and you get really good at your sport, and you're remembered forever. Like Babe Ruth legacy legacy is there like you have uh people 100 years after you're dead that still know your name and in some sense that means you've never died well and gained some degree of immortality and isn't that worth more money than anything that money can bring you well but that's kind of selfish isn't it a little bit I mean, well, isn't isn't wanting an infinite amount of money to spend on anything you want selfish? Well, first of all, you made me choose between you? the two. But what I'm saying is, if you are if you have fortune, you can anonymously use that money to make a massive impact on people's lives. Your name isn't famous, but you will have left a legacy. You can also use your fame to help people out. You can go. You can you can go to any city in America. And walk into a, a homeless shelter, and all of a sudden, all the news crews will flock to you because you're famous, and then you'll be like, "This is this is an outrage. We need to do we need to do better by these people." And or you could walk into like any health clinic and be like, "This is an outrage. We need more research for cancer." Like you use your fame, and then all of a sudden, everybody's like, "Oh shit, we got to donate money to ALS because I just because the famous guy just did the bucket challenge." But the problem is, in this scenario, right, we said you have to be famous but not have a particular large amount of money. You can't have both. And the problem no. with that is how are you going to pay? It's great that you go to soup kitchens and tell people to donate, <laughs> but how are you going to pay your bills? You don't. I mean, oh, how are you going to pay your bills? You're famous. Well, exactly. And you're exploiting you your don't fame for it. personal gain. But when you're famous, you don't, like, it's everything's given to you. I don't know if that's a thing. You know, the the, the other thing, too, I would yeah. say is that, um, Matt, do you like going to the grocery store? Going not to Target? Gra no, grabbing no, grabbing no. a sandwich at a at a sandwichery or, or wherever no. you grab one of those? I'm not a big fan of any of those things. Okay. I love those things. <laughs> I actually really like running errands. And when you're famous, guess what? You can't run errands. You can barely leave your house in some cases. You're hounded by news crews and paparazzi and helicopters, and even the smallest scandal erupts, 
and and forget about it. I mean, you you've seen so many famous people just go crazy based on the the pressure they're under to be famous. Uh, when you're anonymously wealthy, there's no pressure. You can do you can spend none of your money. You could burn it all in a pit in your backyard. That I like is, that argument. I would not. You may have be, actually persuaded me on this one. Even if you gave me the option of just famous or not famous, I would choose not famous. Like if everything else were exactly the same, except everyone knew who you were, nobody knew who you were. I would not want to be famous. It just is not worth the hassle. I just don't for for all the free stuff and the you know getting to hang out with you know other famous people. I don't know. I just I hate hassle. That sounds like a hassle. Now, of course, when I accept my Oscar, this is the moment they're going to play. <laughs> where, of course. you know, when I'm when I'm famous, Hanging out with famous people sucks. Yeah, yeah they, you people know, sucks. Un- unearthed this clip of, of of Sean describing how much he didn't want to be famous. Yeah, that's that's a tough one because I mean, you you rarely get one without the other. Right. That's I can I mean, think of very very seldom. Very like Mother Teresa might have been an example of fame without fortune. Right. I, but I can't think of anybody else. Well, the that... problem is the person with the fortune and no fame you've never heard of. So, I mean, right. exclusively, you're never going to hear of that person. I'm sure there are a lot of... Well, there are a couple of billionaires that, that I probably wouldn't recognize if I right. saw them in a store even or something. Like smaller regional businessmen. Like from tech companies. Yeah, yeah business oil guys. Or, you know, and I'm sure some of them have done a lot of really, really great things. Um, yeah. You know, Mike, Michael Bloomberg has been very philanthropic. Um, I wouldn't say he's all the way there, but you know, there, yeah. there are examples. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, circle or square. Mm, circle or square. Uh, I can't back do a the, uh, we, we, we had our deep question. Now we're going back to the bullshit. To nonsense. Um, <laughs> so is this like, I feel like I'm doing one of those psychology tests. You know, like the, they really do. trying to rate what kind of a person you are. And at the end, it should be like, Sean, you're a psychopath. You need help. <laughs> yeah. so like, you, you exhibited 12 signs of a serial killer. I'm very <laughs> concerned. Uh, you know, are you showing me the ink blot next? I'm, 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 uh, circle or square? You would be a perfect candidate for Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, there, you, here, here, Sean, hold this e meter. Oh, no. <laughs> I've been sucked into another one of these. Um, circle or square? You know, I'm probably going to go with circle. And I think that might surprise people. I think people would say, Sean seems like a square kind of guy. And I am pretty square. But I like a circle because of just the crazy math shit that goes on in a circle. Like, everything is so perfect in a square. Like, everything is is measurable and computable. And you know what you're getting with a square. A circle, it's like, it's 360 degrees. Like, that's weird. And you've got pi and, and radius and dimension and circumference and and you've got all this crazy stuff it, like a circle has has like no straight line. It's cr- it, all right, now you're just naming weird. math things. Uh, I don't know what circles are, <laughs> Matt. Um, no, I'm gonna go with circles because they're weird and squares circles are too are perfect. Weird. Circles are weird. We can agree, but we can also disagree because squares get the job done. All right. Um, squares get Can the we job done. job that is? And not circles. Every job. Every job. Squares can do anything a circle can. Is, is, is that why the cars, uh, the wheels on your car are shaped like squares? No. Now, I knew you were going to bring that example up. <laughs> if you look at it, all right, they are circles, but imagine if they were squares. They would get the job done, wouldn't they? No, I th- actually I think the MythBusters specifically tried this. I remember this one. They busted that one. They tried. They they tried to. They had, they like made a car that had square tires. They did I swear that was an actual episode? They wanted to see if they could do it. Now, if I remember correctly, I don't. That would suck. I don't that think would it suck. Worked. That'd be an awful car. I I think squares are more practical. I think that what is I'm the what argument. I'm picturing in my head here is is something that's very much not a square. It, it it's like a it's like a square, but the edges are less pronounced. If that makes sense, well, that's not a square. Then that wouldn't really be a square, would it? It would be kind of. It would be like a quadrilateral or something. Sure. Math. Anyway, um, squares are. I, I got a rep for squares. Still, look, you got all of your screens are square. They don't have circular screens. Um, you have uh, watches have circular faces. Yeah, but some of them are square. The better watches are square. Um, 
you got square uh, windows or square. They're better windows than the circular windows. But they're not squares, as fun to look at. In, in instances where squares are compared directly with circles, squares get the job done every time, except for when they're wheels of a car. You know, they're kind of like the odd couple of shapes in a way, where one is very neat and tidy and the other is messy and wacky, you know? Great. Yeah, they, they would be like the Felix and... Um, the other guy. The other guy, <laughs> the clean guy. Well, no, Felix was the clean guy, right? Yeah. And the d- Dirty Harry. Was, dirt, was that his? No, I Chester. don't know. No, I don't know. That's not right. Barney. Uh, I feel like his name probably should have been Barney. Maybe. Felix and Barney. I think, yeah. I think Barney that was, sounds like the name of like your that the, like the fuck up who like doesn't care. Like, Barney, and it, not yeah. again! <laughs> and the crowd applauds. His, his apartment's all he's messed. all covered in like spaghetti it's or something. Like, and it's like, like a goddamn mess. Not again! He's essentially uh-huh. a ten year old man child <laughs> in a in a grown up body. Uh, yeah. Hey, listen, I, I like squares just as much as the next guy to be honest. And and a square is way more practical. That's what it is. You can do a lot more with a square. Then you yes. got a circle. It's just that, you know, squares are like your dad who, like, tells you go to your room and clean your room and do things. And then the circle is like the fun uncle who's now, like, see, hey, I, I have I ice cream for dinner. In your, in your example before, the odd couple, I was picturing the exact opposite. I thought the circle was the clean, neat freak. What? Because the circle is, like, perfect. It's circular and, like, everything is, like... And I was thinking the square was the wacky crazy uncle that's kind of bizarre because i thought the complete opposite that a square has four equal sides four perfectly right angles it it doesn't a circle rolls right it move there's movement um yeah. whereas a square just is there um it's very rigid i don't know for some reason i thought the square was like the barney like this really he's is like, a psychology test i'm pretty sure his name's barney i don't know but <laughs> I, I thought of an, another example, and that's glasses. The uh, circular glasses are inferior to rectangular glasses. They're less practical but more fun. Again, I don't have the data to back it up, but I'm very much sure that square, ga- gra- square glasses are more efficient because yeah. they, they have to. They cover, they cover more space. But your eyes aren't square. Your yes, eyes are. are round, and they're the window to your soul. I think technically speaking, if you were to draw like a square right well, here, you, well, you could draw a square, but like your, your, your field of vision is like a your field of vision is square. God made it's, your eye pupils round, or like rectangular, it's the perfect shape. See, like it's like that. That's, That's your not, field no, of vision. Stop. That's not, not like it's not like this. It's more like that. Matt, is the I'm, I'm sorry. Is the Earth that flat? That what shape the is the Earth? The Earth is an oblate spheroid, so it is oh. neither a circle. Get out of here. That's science. 101. Closer to a circle. All right, moving on. We have... Time for one more. One more. One more. That is it. We've make it a good one, then. Gone a whole I'm gonna hour. Ahead. I'm going to make it a good one. Sean. Soup or salad? Bam. Bam. Bam! I was hoping we'd do this one. This is, a good, <laughs> this is a good one. I mean, it really is one of life's great mysteries. It really is. Soup or salad? Or salad. First of all, restaurants that do both should be in some kind of Hall of Fame um, and should get some kind of, like, National Medal of Honor. Um, soup or salad? Gosh, that's really hard. A lot of hibachi places, by the way, will give you both. Well, and the salad dressing is pretty phenomenal that they, they usually do that that really nice ginger salad dressing mm-hmm. you know what i'm talking about i'd be more impressed if they made the soup on the hibachi or the salad on the hibachi yes just you know fried salad and then you chop it um gosh this is the the toughest one of the night for me it, it really is this may be the toughest one we'll ever do because both have such incredible merits I need some some guy some frames around this discussion. So I'm gonna assume it is as a compliment to a to a dinner. So I'm not saying yes. just soup on its own or just salad on its own. I'm saying you're in a restaurant and yes. the waiter comes to you and says soup or salad. Soup or salad. Soup or salad. In that case, as an accompaniment to a an entree, I am going to pick salad. 
because one key reason a salad is less filling the worst I don't think that's true that it I don't think there's truth to that. Oh my god! Sorry, I just soups don't. Soups have the double whammy. No, soups have the double whammy of buying. liquid, which in and of itself is more filling than solids, and B, it has uh, chunky things in it, like and potatoes salad is, and meat. And salad that. often has the dressing on it. Dressing is heavy and a liquid. But they you put on your own dressing. Solid. And yes, that is true. You can have it without dressing, but who the hell does that? And also, restaurant. It's not like restaurants give you big salads, but they give you you know decent amount of soup. I just think soup is too heavy. I also think the coolness of the salad complements a hot entree. Okay, what if you're having a cold entree then? Like what? What name a cold entree you would be given cold, the option of soup or salad? Cold, cold fish. Like what kind of like what kind of cold fish? <laughs> I like this. What kind of cold fish? Sushi's cold fish. Dude, I'm sorry, Matt. Uh, I don't go to sushi places a lot. Do they often offer you super salad with your sushi? <laughs> Sometimes they do. <laughs> um, I, you know, with a cold what entree. If the entree is ice cream. So you're telling me you go to an ice cream parlor <laughs> and you get a, <laughs> a, a, a two scoop on, in a waffle cone and they say, would you like super salad with that? I'm that would actually to, be kind of awesome. What, is, what would a, a cold entree? Uh, it does. They do exist. Well, it, you, it would have to yeah. be like a sandwich. But even what, what restaurant you yeah. go and order a sandwich and they give you super salad? A, a damn good one. I, I I would go to that place. That would be a, that would be a fantastic Panera. Well, I was they don't say that's that, basically a Panera. Kind of should. That'd be awesome. Yeah. You can order soup or salad separately at Panera. You can. And you can do where you get half the sandwich and the soup, or half the sandwich and the salad. Yeah. You know what's funny about that too is when I I used to go to Panera, I would get the soup and the sandwich, but I've I've switched and recently I do the salad and the sandwich. So I've kind of yeah. switched allegiances. You know I think. I you know I I just. Soup is great. I love soup, and there probably are good entree, like a like an Italian restaurant. I would lean towards getting soup. I think a, a soup in an Italian restaurant, a minestrone, um, you know, kind of soup. Um, but I, I just think in a, in a in a in an average restaurant, I'm, I don't know. I'm not I it. I think for me, it's it totally goes with my feeling of the day like if if it's hot outside obviously going right for the salad not even considering the soup mm -hmm. who the who the hell sits there and drinks this, it has a soup on a hot day psychopaths mm -hmm. that's really it but if it's like a it's a, if it's a hot if it's a if it, i mean if it's a cold winter day you can grab that soup and it's nice and it, i think really it all depends on the weather outside is what i'm saying I would I would say it really depends on the soup options, right? Because usually there's just a salad, but usually there's more than one soup option. So if I'm at a place, the first thing I'm going to do is what are the soups today, and yeah. here are the options. And then Consider. the great thing is you have the backup if you don't like the soups. That's the advantage of even having the choice because they could just give you a salad or just give you soup. Um, so let's let's just play it with the mo the two most basic bare bones options that you would probably get. No matter where you go, they're going to give you a house salad yep. with uh, your choice of house dressing or Caesar. Yeah. Or rather, all right, even even more, house salad or Caesar salad. House yeah. salad comes with the house dressing, Caesar salad with the Caesar dressing. Sure. Those are your salad options. Yeah. For a soup, you're going to do either like the It's got to be French soup. onion. It's going to be French onion or New England clam, clam chowder. chowder. Yeah, those are your kind of go-tos. Your, your go-to soups. Yeah, I'm going to take the salad because I don't really I, – I don't like French onion soup in general. Um, and clam chowder I'm really picky about. I don't think most places do a particularly good job. I'm a little spoiled because I live in New England. You live in New England. Uh, nowhere near the ocean, but I live in New England, so it kind of <laughs> counts. Um, that No, I, I would still go with the salad at that point. But, but again, if it were a minestrone, a chicken noodle – um, you know, I, I think there are other soup options I would take um, in, in that respect. All right. But it, 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 is, an, it is an interesting argument. I, I don't think there's a right answer. Yeah, I, I think that's... I think that's you're a really... winner either way, frankly, because a lot of places won't even give you the option. Now, yeah. let, let me... Well, you're coming out with uh, an appetizer, basically. Kind of. And let me ask you this, Matt, now. You're in a restaurant, and what if they upsell you? On the super salad, it's not included in your meal, but for a dollar ninety nine more, two ninety nine more, you can have super salad. Do you take the Do you take the option? 
I'll take it if it's a dollar ninety nine, not two ninety nine. That's that's going a bit too far. That's my my price limit for for, for an extra would probably then, be two bucks. I'd pay I would pay two bucks if I really wanted a side salad. And then what if they threw dessert in with it? You get the, you get the super salad and dessert. Okay, now that's a little bit much. You can go this is, so this is just a casual lunch right here. We're not, we're not trying to get... Like, this is a McDonald's. I can't believe yeah, it. Wow. They're, like, they're really treating me great over here. Wow. <laughs> what service? Super salad at a McDonald's. You get the French onion at, uh, at a McDonald's. They think McDonald's starts putting out soup. They do have soup. What? Yeah, McDonald's has soup. They've always had soup. They don't. McDonald's doesn't have soup. Yes, they have soup. You talking about uh, McDonald's? Absolutely has soup. They've had soup forever. No, not the ones near me. All right, hang on. I'm gonna. I know there's region, there's wacky regional things. I'm gonna do the worst McDonald's Google search I've ever done in my life, which is McDonald's soup. Um, all right. McDonald's soup. So I, so I'm on the Wikipedia page list of. McDonald's. I believe that they probably exist somewhere. Okay, mix soup. I don't think mix they call soup. that. Of course, it's called. Mix it's soup. Campbell's soup. So in a partnership, available in broccoli, cheese, and chicken noodle. It's at, and now, to be fair, it says, this product is only sold in winter months in select markets. Okay. They have it at the ones here in Massachusetts where I live, so I cannot vouch for your local store. Yeah. But here we have mixed soup. I've never had <laughs> it, because um, I've had Campbell's, and I know what that tastes like. It sounds it's terrible. not great. Um, <laughs> so I pass on mixed soup. But I would go ahead and buy some, like, cup of noodle. Oh yeah, I would. Yeah. I some would ramen. Well. I would go. I would. I would get that instead of mixed soup. Like yeah. you can really customize your ramen however you like it. See now, now what soup if, sounds just like a sad, sad choice. What like if you, you went to a uh, what if you went to old misery? What if you went to a restaurant and they offered you cup of soup, ramen, cup uh, of soup, with your meal? I would. I would go for it. I mean, I mean, it's included. It's free. As long, yeah, as long as they had hot sauce, I'd mix some hot sauce in there, or some sriracha, or some honey, and hot sauce, or some, basically, anything to make it taste awesome. Different. I would, I would different. maybe ask if the chef had like some kind of secret spice mixture. Throw some MSG in there. To make <laughs> like got, magic. got any MSG in the kitchen? Yeah, it's a good idea. Just between you and me. <laughs> <laughs> all right matt that is it we're, we're done we're out of time our first ever this or that keep what's left on the list because we'll do another one of these uh at some point in the future um, all right i'll even try and come up with a few of them now i know how it works because it because life is full of choices matt life is full of uh hard choices. options yeah hard yeah a lot of hard there's a lot of hard options out there but you know it's not a Mixed hard choice it's not a hard option no that's that's a no every time. <laughs> That's every, you know what is a hard. We know it is not a hard choice. Listening to the show every week, we do it at UpForDebate.tv. I think everyone out there should go to that website. Why? Because we have every episode we've ever done on the website, audio, video. You can check it out there, and also click that subscribe button. Uh, if you click there, it'll give you links to everywhere you can listen to the show, like Stitcher Radio, iTunes, um, SoundCloud, and more. And of course, where you can subscribe to us on social media at up for debate TV for updates um, on when shows are published and on the movie league. I post the, the scores every couple days there. And of course um, email up for debate TV at gmail.com. Um, we appreciate everyone for joining us. We will be back next week with a topic to be determined. Question mark, question mark, question, question mark, mark question. exclamation point, smiley face. Um, awesome. Matt, anything else? Uh, uh, not at this time to report. You know what? You know what? One we didn't do, by enough. the way. What didn't we do? We didn't do this or that. This or that. Which are you going to choose? Are you with this guy? Or are you with that I'm guy? Gonna, I'm going to go with that over there. Oh, so, with, so what you have isn't good enough. You want the other. Oh, I got to go with that. The grass is always greener, man. I would have picked the same thing. I'm taking that. 100% agree. Can't ever be satisfied. I, and I can't think of a better way to end it. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, everybody, for joining us uh, on behalf of the two of us. Uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time for another great debate here on Up4Debate.